Welcome, court nerds. This is Tom Serve with your boy Phil. And yes, it's Manning Day. I've been slacking and not in the master of the pre trial. But boy, I got something nice for us today. Once again, thank you for all your comments, good and bad. The channel's growing every day, and the outpour from you has been amazing. I must admit, I was nervous on my first video, and it's close to 6,000 views in just four days. I thank you so much. And now I have grown a little comfortable creating content and working and bringing you the very best by getting better and better with every video. So let's dive in. As I promised, it was TPO day in Manning's court. And like every other TPO hearing, it was jam packed with juicy text, audio, herpes. Yes, I said herpes. So let's roll, nerds. Okay, so basically, this is the beginning of the TPO hearing. She's taken roll call, and I just find it absolutely hysterical um, because it's just uh, a plethora of people not knowing how to Zoom, not turning on their camera, not hitting the mute button, hitting the mute button too often. So this goes on for a little bit, uh, and then she starts to roll uh, with the first case. Um, it, it comes right after roll. So I'm going to start the video and let's roll. Deidre, turn your camera on. Take yourself off mute. Take yourself off of mute. Okay, I got it. What is your name? Deidre Johnson. Okay, did you not see the message in the, the I sent you to change your screen name? No, um, I could, I didn't know how to do it, and then and it would and it blocked me out. Change it for you. Stand by. Let's see, Donnie Edwards. Donnie Edwards. All right, Ms. Johnson, you're gonna have to figure out how to put your email in the chat. Oh, but email in the chat. Okay. Mr. Um, Mr. Johnson, Mr. Oh. Edwards didn't show up, so I'm just missing that. Okay. But you're okay. Gonna have to figure out how to place your email in the chat so that we can send you the dismissal. Oh, Gerard, please put my email in the chat. I don't know how to do it, baby. Hey, you're screaming over me. I'm talking to you. Push it back on me. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Place it in the chat. I'm gonna send you that dismissal form. It may take the end of the day. Okay, but keep it with you because it may take a week or so for this to come off of GCIT. Now you can take yourself back off mute, ma'am. They put my stuff outside illegal. Just, so I, just have somebody help put your email in the chat. We'll email the dismissal form. Okay. Once that email hey, in the I, chat. Hey, can you help me with the email? For, um, she's, my judge is asking me to put the email in the chat, and I don't know how. Where I got to put it in at, Miss Manny? In the chat. In the chat. Okay. And how I do that? But, uh... Touch it, there'll be three dots. I'm going to place you back on mute, ma'am. I got to finish oh, calling my count. Hey, thank you. Huh. All right, ma'am, showing up. Didn't follow instructions. It says C21 on your screen. That's not your first and last name. Who are you? You have to take yourself off mute, ma'am. <laughs> Donnie Edwards. Okay. Asked you several times to change your screen name. You did not do that. <laughs> Can you hear me, Judge? I can. Okay. <laughs> uh, now, Ms. Deidre, hold on. Y'all both going to stay here. Neither one of y'all is going to start. Hold on. Ms. Deidre, stay. Hang on. All right. Y'all hang on. All right. Let's see. One last time. Ebony Walker, Carlos Hill. Let's dismiss. Eddie Farmer, Melinda DeBellis. Mr. Farmer, take yourself off mute. Raise your right hand. Hang on, Ms. Deidre. You gotta take yourself off either. <laughs> you swear, Mr. Farmer. They hit that little microphone. Okay, got gotcha. you. Swear, testimony about to give is the truth told truth, nothing but the truth. I do. Hi, right, Mr. Farmer. Have you um, you place your hand down? Is <clears throat> she's not here, so it's gonna be pretty simple. Okay, I really just need kind of yes or no answer. Is everything in your petition still true and correct? Yes. 
Have you heard from her? Looks like she was served on the 21st. Have you heard from her since she was served? No, ma'am. Okay. Are you still asking that this be put in place? I am. And are you in fear for your safety? I certainly am. No question. All right, Mr. Farmer, uh, we're going to go ahead and put this in place for 12 months. If you could place your email in the chat. Once you do that, you can go ahead and leave the meeting, okay? I'm going to place you back on mute so I can finish calling my count. Thank you so much, Judge. God Thank bless. You. you too. Stay healthy and safe. All right, let's see. So I got Tanika Smith, Jonathan Bryant. That one's failure to appear. Nathaniel Ridley and Andrea Hurd. That one's failure to appear. Manning bomb. Let's see. Simmons. So, Ms. Bradley, looks like Mr. Simmons hasn't been served. Your case is reset until December, excuse me, December, February the 17th at 11 a.m. If you place your email in the chat, Ms. Free's going to send you a reset notice in a sheriff's form. Fill that out and get it back to Ms. Free before the end of the day. <clears throat> Thank you. Get back to that same email, okay? Make sure you put a two to four hour time frame that's the best time to serve, okay? Stay healthy and safe. Have a good weekend. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. I see extra people here. Is there people here that are supposed to be on this calendar that I did not call your name? <clears throat> that's parties. Anybody that's a party that did not call your name? Judge, did you call Tiffany Cobble? No. Are you a party? I'm a witness. Don't call yet. I don't know witnesses name. Just party. Oh. So who's the party for you? Omar Atkinson. Omar Atkinson. <laughs> You're sitting close to somebody and hear all that feedback. Okay. I'll place you back on mute. Is, uh, is it Angela Bodie? Can you take, are you a witness, ma'am? Judge, she she's a, a, a witness in our case. Okay, all right. See what, we'll go ahead and uh, take y'all's case. Ms. Palmer and Mr. Gresham. Ms. Deja will take, Ms. Deidre will take you and Ms. Edwards. Ms. Deidre, do you have somewhere to drive to? Can't smoke in my courtroom. Ms. Deidre, do you have somewhere that you need to drive to? It looks like you're in a car. Take yourself off mute. I'm here, sir. I'm here. Do you have somewhere that you need to drive to? To the gas station to get a charger because my phone is low. Okay, I tell you what. Why don't you turn your disconnect, go do what you got to do, and come back, okay? And rejoin. Okay. All right, don't okay. stay on here while you're driving, okay? Okay. All right, thank you, ma'am. All right, Ms. Palmer and Mr. Gressel. So, Mr. Morris, you got uh, Ms. Bodie's a witness for you? Yes, sir. All right. Ms. Palmer, do you have any witnesses or just yourself? I have a recording and I have physical evidence. Do you have any witnesses, people that are no. here? No. no? Okay. Uh, let's see, Ms. Bodie, I am going to place you in the waiting room, okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And once we get ready for you, we'll bring you back in. Yes, ma'am. All right. Ms. Palmer and Mr. Gresham, if you both raise your right hands. Yes, we swear a firm testimony about to give is the truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth. You just both nod your heads. All right. If y'all can take yourselves off mute. So, um, Ms. Palmer, I will, um, Mr. Morris, do you need to do an opening or do you just want me to take her testimony and then? Mr. Morris. Uh, yes, ju yes, Judge, we can just take her testimony. Okay, so Ms. Palmer, what we're going to do is take your testimony. You tell me why you have sought a TPO against Mr. Gresham. And I'm sorry, I forgot. You still want to go forward, correct? Yes. Okay, I forgot to ask. I apologize. Now, start with the most recent event and work backwards. And I'm asking you a question. Hopefully, you know how to use the share screen button because when you present evidence, you're going to have to just like share your screen. Okay. Even if the evidence is physical? Uh, I mean, I'm, okay, that's a broken head. Okay. 
I mean, if you got a video, you have to be able to share your screen to play the video. So, okay. Okay. All right. It's, it's, not, it's not a video, Your Honor. It's a um, recording. Okay. Like, a, like a voice memo. Okay. We, well, we may or may not be able to hear it, but we could try, okay? But start from the recent event. We're backwards now. Mr. Morris may object to something. I'll tell you a couple things he may object to. It may save you a little time. If you try to tell me something that somebody else said, he's okay. going to object. All right. So you have to tell me stuff that's just happened between you and Mr. Gresham. So let's say, for instance, Mr. Gresham called your mother and said something. Unless your mother is here to tell me what Mr. Gresham said to her, you can't tell me. Okay. Only that, only your mother can tell me. Okay. So if you're going to say, um, that you know, he told somebody else they have to be here, okay? So start from the most recent event and work backwards. So if you're going to say something like he, he, he threatened me, I'm going to want to know specifics, okay? <laughs> Mr. Morris may object. So Ms. Atkins, I'm putting you on mute. You're just talking. You're not supposed to be on, okay? All right. Okay. So if you're not, if this isn't your case, you can turn your camera off, but please listen because when I call your name, if you don't turn your camera back on, the case can be dismissed. So, Ms. Palmer, Mr. Morris may object. If he does, just stop what you're saying. Let me hear his objection, and then I'll make a decision. After that, Mr. Morris will get to ask you some questions, okay? Okay. All right. All right. And it's just, just talk. It's just a conversation we're having, okay? Go ahead and okay. tell me what happened. Okay, so on the night of November the 27th, we were downstairs in my living room. The work Gresham was sitting next to me. Um, my daughter Israel was at the table by the wall, and my son Jeremiah, who turns two today, he was um, roaming around the living room. Uh, prior to this, the work Gresham he went outside to smoke weed marijuana, and whenever the work Gresham smokes marijuana weed, he gets really um sexually aroused so we were sitting next to each other on the couch we had the covers of us and he proceeds to say to me um i'm about to go down on you now i'm not trying to be on you is like mm, oral sex mm -hmm. so i said no this is not a life porno my children are down here. And he proceeds to keep doing it, to keep doing it, to keep doing it. And I keep telling him no. And that's when I tell him, I was like, I told you already, if you're gonna continue to use drugs, me and you are not gonna be physically intimate. And then it turns into like this big thing. He was just like, you know, why should I have to change uh, my basically drug habit? And it turned into this big debate and discussion. And he was like, I'm about to go take a shower. And I was like, fine. So I left. I went to my neighbor's house. I came back. And I proceeded to have a conversation with him, you know, to try to like smooth things over. And that's when he proceeded to say, I don't have to listen to you. And he put on these headphones that I just brought him recently okay. okay and this is also his uh weed grinder that he left that he didn't um take with him <clears throat> so i um which he kept in the kitchen so i'm trying to talk to him at the time i had nails they were about oh, like this one right? and he was like i don't have to listen to you like um whenever he doesn't want to talk he gives like the cold shoulder or he'll just walk around ignoring like not saying nothing and like me and my oldest daughter we constantly try to speak to him talk to him and he'll just act like we're not there um yes and whenever things get like hard for him he just kind of shuts down so my nail i lifted it up with my nail i didn't like hit him touch him none of that i lifted it up with my nail just like this like it came off like this and he put it back down and he did it three times. And I'm like, please, I'm trying to talk to you. I'm trying to talk to you. And he pushed me in the bathroom. Like he snatched off the headphones, pushed me in my bathroom because at the time we were in my closet. 
So he pushed me in my bathroom and he started cursing at me, yelling at me, all in my face. I never seen him that upset. Like he had been like verbally abusive and you know, emotionally, but physically, like he just took it to another level. So he pushed me in the bathroom. He first he took off the headphones, pushed me in the bathroom. I told him to stop, da, 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 and started screaming and yelling, calling out my name. He was like, I will knock you out. Then he takes the headphones, throws them at the wall, and they broke. So and I was like, I'm about to call the police. And then that's when he proceeds to call his mom. Uh, whenever the work goes on, when things are not necessarily going his way, like there's hard troubles or hard times, uh, he'll try to make things bigger than what they are and then always include his mom in it or call his mother so that she knows, like, if he says that something has gotten physical or, or anything like that, in order for him to leave, she'll be on the way or send somebody to get him. And this, yes, this is like a consistent or like repeated habitual cycle. So I'm, I was like, I'm about to call the police. And he's like, oh, my mom, da, 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 da. you know, she said she's had to call the police. And it was just like a huge argument. And it was like back and forth. And I'm not gonna lie to you, I was scared. That's right. Cause like, I mean, like I said before, like, you know, we have had arguments. There has been like verbal and like emotional abuse, but it has never gotten physical like that. And that's, you know, when I started the recording and then he proceeded to get on with my face. And he's now saying on the phone, hit me, hit me, be hit me, hit me, hit me, hit me, be hit me. Like, no, 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 like, so his mom could like hear, so he could make it seem like I hit him, but I didn't, Your Honor. Yes, ma'am. And, um, yeah, so that's what you begin to hear on the recording. And then he also, uh, my dad just died in April. I'm and sorry. then he brings, up, he brings up my dead father, talking about he ain't ish. Uh, my mom and my uh, father were also uh, physically abusive. And the defendant knows this. I got ticket from my mom when I was 10. Um, so, yes. So he began to say, I don't have no family. Like, nobody cares about me. And, like, all of these, like, very like verbal and emotional abusive things that, you know, really hurts. So, yes. And so that's the night of the event. And another thing like that I said in the recording, if someone put their hands on you, you would be ready to leave. There's nothing that would keep you here. Like, you know, you would be packing your stuff, moving fast, trying to get out. Like that lasted forever. And that's what I said towards the end. I was like, you know, you need to stop lying. Because if I put my hands on you, like you're trying to say that I did, you would be gone. Like there would be no discussion. Like, you know, anytime, you know, things happen, you'd be ready to leave. And um, I also wanted to share this as well. So that was the event of the night he left, packed his stuff, got most of his things, but I have uh, the headphones and the weed grinder. <clears throat> I also wanted to share this as well. It's a part of, uh, I guess you could say physical, emotional, and uh, verbal abuse. And even on the recording, he also talks about, he taunts me and says how he gave me herpes. Well, I mentioned how he gave me herpes, and then he taunts me, like, ha yeah, I gave you herpes. Uh, the defendant has given me chlamydia four times, and also has given me herpes. The last time he gave me chlamydia, it led to a miscarriage. He has left me and my children several, on several different occasions. Whenever he's upset or feel low, he goes to his mom's house, which is 15 minutes away. The longest desertion uh, period was 15 months. During this time, I was pregnant with Jeremiah, who was now two, he was two today. Um, he does not help with rent, lights, anything. Um, um, or give me any money for food or lights. Currently, I'm on food stamps. Uh, my lights got cut off several Judge, times. Judge, if I can object to any evidence that 
that isn't really relevant to the TPO as, as far as. Well, it's actually shared in the TPO as well. Sorry, I hate to do this. I'm going to interrupt you really quickly, okay? I have to hear ex parte. So if you just want to place yourself on mute, I'll be right back, okay? So you just, yeah, you can just stand down. There's one thing. I'll be right back. I have to run to another computer. to go to food pantries uh when now i have food stamps and at the time that Judge, I if in, i can i i'd like to object to anything that doesn't have to do with the tpo per se i i don't think any of the bills or that that sort of thing necessarily have to do with the with the tpo this is they're all, they're also in a in a divorce proceeding i think that that may be more relevant there but not as relevant here okay so miss palmer um i will go ahead and okay i understand he's not helping you financially but you know yeah that's not as it's not as relevant as well it, it could be relevant just in general however i understand he's not helping you pay the bills in general so you can um move on to about other things i'm sure that'll come up in the divorce has the divorce been filed mr morris uh yes judge as of, I, I believe, the day after this incident, you know and Miss Palmer filed. Oh, yes, okay. I'm not representing him in the divorce, but okay. So you know. Palmer, do you know which judge that's assigned to? Yes, let me pull up. I'm sorry. <laughs> so it is assigned to. Sorry. If it's here in Fulton County, I can find. I can look it up. Yeah, he's in Fulton County. Okay. Mark right. L. Bryce. No. Okay. I got you, Judge Williams. Thank you. All right. Go ahead. You can continue. Okay. I, um. Well, I was saying that overall to say. Um. Basically, I I've gotten chlamydia. Oh, more than once. Uh, Sorry, uh, Mr. Morris, I need your client to turn his camera on. Uh, Derwood, are you there? If he dropped off. Derwood? Uh, I don't see him on here. Should I? Yeah, maybe. I will, I'll try to shoot him a text and. Okay. Yeah, see I, don't see, I don't see him on here. So, yeah. I'm sorry, Ms. Palmer. He dropped okay. off. Um. The defendant has lied. On oh, one second, Mr. Palmer. Let me get. Okay. Let's get him back on here. Let's get him back. Ms. Palmer, while he's trying to get touch him, um, so are you represented in the divorce? In the divorce? No. Well, I'm in the process of trying to work those things out, like financially, um, I'm trying to get some things in order. Okay, I just want to see if you had a lawyer. Okay. Uh, Judge, he's he's trying to get back on right now. He, apparently he had a, a technical computer issue that dropped him off. Okay, so there you go. And Mr. Morris, it looks like uh, I don't have another date yet. 
So the status conference. Did you go January the 30th, Ms. Palmer, to the status yeah. conference? Yes. And they, they reset it to another date? Uh, they gave us a 30 day. We're supposed to do a uh, mediation. Okay. Got and it. they gave us a 30 day. All right. So I don't I don't see the other date that's in here yet, though. Just for your information, Ms. Palmer. All right, he's back, Ms. Palmer. Go ahead. Okay. Um so this is a, another event that had happened. So uh, the defendant, he was uh, working Monday through Thursday, 12 hour shifts for $30 an hour at a warehouse job. <clears throat> he got paid every Wednesday. By Monday, he was um, calling his mother, asking her for money for the lights. So like I said, we're on prepaid. Um, I don't know where the money was going. At the time, we wasn't paying rent. And um, cause I we wasn't paying rent, and we we do have two cars. <clears throat> His car was taken, my car was taken. So I don't know if it was drug use, but we never had any money. Judge, I, what, what once again, I, I've got I have to object to anything that doesn't really have to do with the with the reason we're here today. the relevance of Ms. Palmer the financial situation okay unless you throw it Ms. Palmer do you work Dude, no okay. I was a general manager prior okay so and then because uh, I filed for a divorce after he left the first time but I wanted everything to work out and he told me when he came back that I didn't have to work okay so I didn't work but I have experience and I have managerial experience. Okay. And my last job, I was a GM. Okay. So let me ask. So are you saying that he said you didn't have to work and you weren't working? So then he, he wasn't paying the bills. You, he was not. You feeling like he, he paid. I, I will be in this apartment for almost three years and he has paid rent twice. Okay. Did he? Was he not letting you work? He felt financially controlled. I mean, what? Well, basically, yeah. He told me that I didn't have to work, like just you know, be with the kids, and he'll handle everything. Okay. But yeah. everything always felt short. Okay. Anything else? Um. Oh, I'm sorry. I wrote. I typed like a whole okay. thing. Um. So, yes. The defendant ended up uh, losing that job due to not going. Um, and it wasn't said, it, nobody knew. His mom got a letter in the mail of a. Uh, uh, Judge, what, what, once again, I'm going to check to the, the relevance of, of his employment history as to a TPO, unless this is going somewhere else that I'm not aware of. All right. So, um... Ms. Palmer, let me, has there been any more um, threats of violence or any time where you feel um, threatened, <clears throat> intimidated, anything like that that you want to tell me about? Yes. Yeah, so whenever he lost a job or felt low, he uh -huh. would take it out on me and my oldest daughter. Like I said, like he would, it would be verbal abuse, emotional abuse. Like he would not talk to us. He would walk around and ignore us. Like my oldest daughter would go to him and hug him and be like, hey, dad, I love you. You know, how's your day going? He wouldn't say nothing. So when you would um, say verbal abuse, what would he say? Well, it would be mostly towards, so I guess it would be nonverbal. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> it would be nonverbal, like nonverbal abuse, like no communication. Like he would just shut us out cold. And um, when it's verbal, like it would be like a huge argument. Like we would be going back and forth, you know, due to him losing his job or due to him not being where he want to be. Uh, I really noticed the change of behavior. Like once my daughter started her own business, uh, it's called Bailey Aid. <laughs> she opened up her like own lemonade, lemonade business. And I noticed like, you know, since that he wasn't working or bringing in any money and my daughter was very profitable in what she was doing, it caused him to, you know, act out. 
Look at him rolling his eyes, like rolling his eyes, like he he, he he's sick and tired of hearing her. I, I, I she, he is not coming off well. You know, Manning's looking at him, and she's coming off very believable. And even before all this happened, like I told him, I was like, I have seen the signs and the patterns. Like you get low like this, you shut us out, and then you make an excuse or try to start an argument with me, or so that you know you could leave and you don't have to necessarily be here. And yeah, that 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 last the twenty seventh, I fought on the twenty eighth because the twenty seventh that was just it, like that was it. Okay, all right. Anything else you want to tell me? Or are you ready for Mr. Morris to ask you a few questions? Oh, uh, sorry, let me look at my phone. I, um, well, I guess I have nothing to do. Well, oh, this is an example of him, like, I guess you could say shutting down. Mm -hmm. He was employed at Delta Airlines, and okay. they fired him due to drug use and also selling buddy passes, not complying to the rules. So when he was fired from that job, um, he consumed a whole bunch of Molly. I don't know if you know what Molly is, but it caused decay in his teeth. Um... Yeah, so that's just another example of like when, you know, things are not going his way and things are low, like he responds in that way with drugs and anger and, you know, and yeah, I recently got a job offer for Delta and the plan was for him to uh, be here and keep the kids while I go. And that was another reason why he left so he didn't have to like help. So, yeah. Okay. Um, if he smokes weed and does Molly, why is he so miserable? I'd be walking around cloud nine if I was taking weed and Molly and not having to pay rent. Why is this guy so miserable? He's got some deeper issues than, than, than not liking his family. He's got some really deep shit going on. You had a recording? Did you, what is the recording? Yeah. What, what is it in? Uh, it's on my phone. <laughs> is it you and him? And when is it? And it's, uh, it's November the 27th. And okay. yes, it is me and him. Okay. So let me start it over. So at this point, he had uh, just pushed me in the bathroom and I'm coming out and that's when I told you, I said I was gonna call the police. So I grabbed my phone, he called his mom. And then that's when he proceeded to talk about my parents and he was all in my face going like this, like hit me B, hit me B. And uh, yeah, okay. and uh, you do hear me responding and cursing. <laughs> and my daddy just got Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I understand, but just I need you to play and not talk so I can hear. And yes, my dad had just passed away in April the first. This guy's okay, brutal. So sorry for your loss. Mr. Morris, do you have questions? Yes, Judge, I have a few. Um, <clears throat> going back to the night of November 27th, um, you were trying to have a conversation with Mr. Gresham, correct? Mm -hmm. And he put on his headphones, correct? Yes, the headphones that I have bought him. The, the headphones you bought him. Uh, and you uh, 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 attempted several times to physically take them off his head, correct? Mm, yes, I lifted them. I didn't physically take them off his head. They were still on. I just lifted them to where just a part of his ear could hear. Okay. Um. 
other than court appearances for uh, the divorce proceedings, the two of you have had no contact since the the night of uh, November 27th, correct? No, but this is normal. Whenever he leaves, he right. doesn't check on us or the kids. Um, like the lights should be off right now, but by, to the glory of God, they're on. You did how uh, he, let me backtrack he to the best of your knowledge is he uh primarily staying at his mother's house now or are well, you I, have no idea. I have no idea what he's residing um the day before your i want to say the uh we'll just say shortly before uh your last hearing in the divorce matter, you dropped off uh, several items at his mother's house, correct? Yes, I dropped them off because I knew she knew where to get them to, how to get them to them, not to, not to say that he lived there, but I, I'm pretty sure, you know, that's his mom. Like I said, you know, they're extremely close and um, yeah. So I dropped off the items because I knew she could get them to me. So you didn't know if he was living there or not, but no, you just I knew. No, she... I have no idea where he stays at the moment. Uh, you, you you stated that uh, if somebody puts their hands on you, they would be ready to leave uh, that that home immediately. Uh, isn't it true that? Uh, oh, that's, not, that's not where I stated. Sir. Okay. Well, we'll we'll, we'll strike that. I'll, I'll ask that a different. I'll ask a different question. Isn't it true that M Mr. Uh, Gresham left your home that that two of you lived in uh, the night of the twenty seventh and has not been back twenty seventh of November? Yes, but he had left several times. This is not and as, and as you said, he, he hasn't reached out and contacted you since then. No. But this is um, normal. This is normal. You, and, it, and, and it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, communication with me, but my children are extremely important. And I feel like, you know, like even with this TPO, like he should still be able to see his children. It's just communication with, with us. After all of the things that he has done to her, she's still sitting here saying how important it is for him to see his kids. My heart goes out to this woman. She is a strong woman. And this guy is a grade A jerk. I, it makes me sick. You still want him to see the children? Is that what you're saying? Yes. You filed for divorce the day after this incident, is that correct? Yes. And um, you alleged in your uh, in your petition that the reason for the divorce was that the, the marriage was, was irretrievably broken, correct? Yes. So when filing, like I had no help, so I just went there by myself, but you know, I realized there are some things that I should have checked off. And mm -hmm. getting a TPO, I had no idea it was free either. So like a lot of things were, uh, a lot of jewels were given to me once, you know, I began to speak with a lawyer and get, try to uh, get help. But I, mm -hmm. I had no idea, like I thought it cost money, like filing for the divorce was a lot of money. And so. on your petition, uh, there it's number number 22 uh, to, the, there's a place for you to indicate if there's a history of violence by the respondent toward me and I am afraid that the respondent will engage in further acts of violence or harassment toward me unless the court enters a temporary and permanent restraining order uh, you did not check that at the time correct like I said I filed by myself. I had no help. I don't, I don't have a lawyer. So I kind of went through it as best as I know, like how I filed before, because 
that's what I knew, but I should have checked that because the night before, as you heard of the recording, was extremely volatile. But I, but you didn't check it at the time. No. And uh, isn't it true when Mr. Uh, Gresham filed his answer? He gave two in reasons divorce? in his counterclaim to the divorce. Yes, yes, okay, yes. Okay. Uh, in Mr. Gresham's an answer and counterclaim, he gave two reasons uh, for uh, for seeking a divorce. One being that the marriage was irretrievably broken, and two being cruel treatment, alleging that uh, you had had struck him physically it, that's true correct that was his response but the response is not true okay and uh this particular action this tpo was uh filed on what date are you aware well, I started, I can pull up. I started the process before his response. I can actually show it to you. My, uh, my, me doing you know, has nothing to do with his response. I couldn't even see his response. I had to pay mm -hmm. for the response because it wasn't emailed to me. So I had right. to pay. And by the, by the time that I paid, which I can show you as well, by the time that I paid, <clears throat> the request was already given for my TPO. So I started, the process. I didn't physically go down to the courthouse, save families. I started the process with them via email and I can show you that the process but was- you, you filed this the day after your first hearing for the divorce, correct? No, I, I, I can, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna pull it up so I can show you, you. You did not file this after your first hearing for the divorce? No, I can actually pull it up, hold on, I'm sorry. I was in the process with safe families. No, I'm asking when you filed it. When did when was it filed? I'll speed this up. The twentieth, January twentieth. It, it was it was it was filed January twentieth. Thank you, Judge. Uh, and there okay. was a hearing on the eighteenth uh, in the in the divorce, I believe. Uh, at which point it came out that Mr. Gresham, in his answer and uh, counterclaim, had alleged cruel treatment and uh, that 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 you had struck him. Uh, you mentioned that um, you have not been working, uh, and I think Judge specifically asked you if he threatened you or prevented you from working and your response was that he told you that you didn't have to work. Is that correct? Yes. And as far as the verbal abuse goes, you allege that, or you, you testified rather that uh, it was primarily uh, what you said, what you called the, the silent treatment that he shuts down and, and does not talk to you, correct? No, it's not primarily that. Like I stated before, with the chlamydia and the herpes, like the disease that he has given me multiple times, mm -hmm. that caused emotional abuse. I, I, like I said, I, I had a miscarriage due to having chlamydia. I so it's, it's, it's way more than sorry. just sorry that happened. Mm -hmm. Judge. I have a question, Your Honor. Am I able to share my screen so that I could show that I started the process for the TPO on uh, January the 5th? No, oh, that, that, well, that, that, that's okay. Just, I mean, I, I understand that process, so that, that's fine. Okay. All right. Judge, I have no further questions. All right. Uh, do you want to call your client? Um, may I have just a moment to confer with him? Sure. It may not be necessary. May, may I put you on mute, Judge? Sure, I'll put him on mute also. Okay, thank you.
So, I mean, basically what we got going on here is she's still giving him what he would really want. He doesn't want to be with her, obviously. He could go and do his drugs, go to the club, do his molly, grind his weed, give somebody else herpes. She's going to get what she wants. She wants him out. And she's still down for having him see his children. I mean, like the lawyer's kind of getting at that when he's saying, you know, don't, you know, you don't want him there anyway. Um, and I don't think he wants to be there. So, I mean, what's the point of the TPO? That's what the lawyer's kind of getting at. But just to have that piece of paper is good for her because you heard that recording. That, that That's not a good environment for the children either. Judge, uh -huh. uh, after conferring with my client, we, we'd just like to, to make a brief argument. We're not going to call any witnesses. Okay, go ahead. <clears throat> Judge, the, the, the testimony from Ms. Palmer has, has borne out a few things. Um, the headphones that she brought up, she said she, he threw them against a wall. While certainly not great behavior, that's... that's He's, he broke his own property there. You know, he didn't um, <sighs> strike her in any way there. Um, she, she, you know, ad, ad, admitted to uh, trying to take the, take the headphones off or at least lift them several times and contacting him in that manner. Uh, she did say that he pushed her into the bath, into the bathroom. Uh, but she also admits that there's been no contact since the 27th. So this isn't a, you know, stalk matter. This isn't a matter where, um, you know, she, she herself says that a, a lot of this seems to be silent treatment. The emotional abuse that she, she describes is a, a lot of it is him actually not contacting her or talking to her. Uh, she, you know, does want him to have contact with the children, which I think is is kind of counterintuitive for somebody, someone seeking a TPO. Um, He's got a point. You know, my client left the house the night of this incident. And like I said, has not contacted her again, uh, is not looking to contact her. Uh, the most that she alleges here as far as physical contact on that night is 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 that he he may have pushed her into the bathroom, which we would dispute, but uh, uh, you know, he was fought for to call his mother on that night to have a witness on the phone, which she testified to. Uh, she did play a recording, which um, I, I don't know what you were able to glean from it. I was not able to hear much. There were definitely two people shouting at each other. Um, but there doesn't seem to be any evidence of, of, of anybody striking anybody or physical confrontation there. Um, as a cheap, uh, when she filed for divorce, her petition, uh, doesn't, you know, does not state that she needs a TPO. My client on the other hand did, uh, in his answer respond that uh you know one of his reasons for divorce was uh, her was miss palmer putting her hands on him so i i just don't think there's been enough evidence to grant this tpo uh at, at most it seems that he except tends to go silent and shut down and engage maybe in activities that uh are not helpful in a marriage but certainly not worthy of a TPO, especially when Ms. Palmer, uh, based on her testimony and, and specifically her, her testimony that uh, she wants him to have contact with the children. She doesn't seem to be scared about that or concerned about that. And the fact that you know, she, she went to his mother's house unannounced after all of this. So I'd ask that you deny this this uh, TPO uh, and and let the parties uh, go through with with the divorce and I, I think a lot of these matters seem like they're better handled 
through the the divorce and, and the temporary order uh, in those proceedings. Ms. Palmer, how much money has he given you for the children since he's left? He has not given me a dime. Not a dime. And they're your children together? And the reason why, yeah, there are children together. And the reason why I still want him to have communication with the children, because like I said, like, this is between me and him. But at the end of the day, the kids do need their father. But it's unfortunate that things like this are happening. Ms. Palmer. Yeah. Let me ask you a question because you don't have your, your phone. How are you paying for your for, for food and things for your children? Well, I'm currently on food stamps and lights by faith, like just assistance and trying to make things work. But like I said, I'm on prepaid lights and by the glory of God, like, because when he deserted us last time, like, there, the lights would go off all the time. And I was pregnant with Jeremiah, working oh. at the GM, like trying to handle and do all these things by myself. And to me, that is, you know, a form of emotional abuse and also neglect. And, you know, it's extremely hard. And I feel like, you know, every time he gets upset, he just abandons and leaves. And, you know, he starts a huge fight, you know, which is mentally like, it's a lot. He starts a huge fight so that he's able to walk away instead of just saying, you know what? I can't do this. You know, or you know what? You know, this is not necessarily where I want to be. So, so Mr. Morris, um, I find that that is a type of, you know, financial abuse. I mean, this, there's two children that are out. No, sir. <laughs> he hasn't paid anything for, I was talking, he was raising his hand. That's why I said no, sir. No, he doesn't talk. I mean, and that, that's sad, bordering on disgusting, if he hasn't paid anything for these children since November in hell. Get him, Manny. Her responsibility, I got this, ma'am. Both are kids, I get it, but it's not my responsibility. You're, it's their responsibility, not just hers, not just his. So, you know, and she says he's done that before and has, I mean, that is a type of abuse when it's, you know, maybe he didn't make her not work, but he knows she's not working. He knows there's her and two children. And that, uh, you know, that that's a type of, and, and I'm inclined to grant it, let Judge Williams, you know, do something as she, as she chooses when they get there, where she can dismiss it, you know, or what have you. But and she didn't include the children on this. This it didn't include the children. Um, it was her and him. So the children were not included. Um, but that's what I'm inclined. But I'm, I'm, and I know Judge Williams will not be impressed that not a penny. I mean, she's wrong. She could, but these children, they're not. And in all of this, these children are the ones that suffer. So this is something that concerns me. And if a court order is going to be what makes him give her money and calm down and man up, so to speak, and communicate, because you can't go silent when there are children involved. And Mr. Warren, I don't know if you're married. I mean, I am. And I've slept many a night. Yeah, I've yeah, <laughs> gotten that silent treatment. I've been giving it myself. But when you get kids involved, you may not talk to your spouse, but the kids didn't ask to be here. And that concerns me that that, that behavior would go on. And that, and that, I mean, is it physical abuse? Is it something you can see physically? Is somebody, no, but it's, it, it's abuse. It's a type of abuse. And I'm inclined to put it in place and then let Judge uh, Williams make any changes that she deems necessary, which would give time, of course, for him to learn to do the right thing, start doing the right thing. And then when it gets there, she can dismiss it. It could turn into a temporary. Well, judge, alternatively, would, would, would you consider uh, maybe, maybe taking this under consideration and a lot? Yes, obviously he should, he should be paying for these, these, these children, but there, there is no child support order right now. 
would you consider take you know taking this under consideration for 30 days or so to uh, allow him to let's get the child support process started and he can take affirmative actions and prove to you that uh, he rather than taking out a, a, a TPO uh, perhaps we can put a hammer over his head to, to get this child support started and do the right thing there. Yeah. And, and this isn't directed at you, Mr. Morris, it's, it's kind of directed just at, at adults in general that have kids and, you know, I get there's not an order. There shouldn't, no, Miss Palmer. <laughs> there's not an order, but nobody should have to order him to pay for his children. He knows, he knows when he left that situation, what it is. He knows that she gets assistance to help get food. He knows all this, that someone in a black robe has to tell him, pay for your children is sad. <laughs> but I will do this for you, Mr. Morgan. I will extend the ex parte, which means the TPO remains in place. So it remains in place. We'll come back in uh, for 60 days. But we're coming up. How much is the rent, Ms. Palmer? The rent is fifteen fifty-two. How old are your children? Uh, he turned two today, Jeremiah, and Israel should be four in April. Happy birthday, to Jeremiah. Two and three. Are they in daycare? Well, you don't work two. Yeah. Um, so they don't. They have peach care. Yeah, they have peach care. I'm currently working with TANF, Temporary Assistance for Needy Families, to get him on child support. When he left last time, like I said, <clears throat> when I was pregnant with Jeremiah, he abandoned us. I tried to do it then, and I'm still trying to, you know, go with the process of doing it. But this is a habitual thing, Your Honor. He has left us multiple times and not have paid or taken care of me. So tell me what kind of help you're getting as far as paying, like, rent, keeping your lights on, things like that. Well, I'm waiting on uh, rent rental assistance yes, and with lights, um, someone is helping me keep them on. Judge, I will discuss mine with my client if, if it, it should have already been made clear by you, but I, I, I will um, reiterate that we need to start doing the right things here. The, if, if you, you know, if you're going to extend this ex parte by 60 days, that th this is his chance to uh, show that 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 they he gets what he done. I don't care if he likes her. I really don't. Or if she likes him, doesn't matter. But you know, you got one job is turning two, and I'm, ass I'm, I'm assuming the kid doesn't have a, a birthday gift from no. dad. <laughs> <laughs> so about, sickening. I got this. Let's just think about these kids. But what I'm going to do is right now, I think until then, I think a good thousand dollars a month coming from him starting probably on Monday would be good. That's a good start. I mean, that's a good start. That's because usually I could say, you know, the rent, but that gives her some and they'll get back in, in front of Judge Williams. It would be 30 days. So by then, they would have probably had that chance to get back in front of Judge Williams and, uh, did Ms. Palmer, did it, the, the date is not in the system. So did they give you a, I know you said 30 days, but did they give you a physical date to come back in the divorce? No, he said that he would email it out and I have not received it yet. I check my email every day. Yeah, because usually it's in here and it's not in here. Um, we can set this out until like, oh, let's see what this is, until April? By, surely by then, because that'd be like 60 days. Uh, let's see. Calendar click a little bit too far. Like um, like April, like April seventh. That's that first Friday or March March thirty first. I'm sorry, that's a Friday. Um, Judge, I don't. If I am going to be representing him, then yeah, check out your calendar and see. Well, let me check out my calendar. Um, we got March thirty first, April seventh. Is there anything in the second week of April 
well, I'm I'm in Augusta, and you know how oh, yeah. <laughs> we we get out of town the first week in April, and I'll be I'll be out of the country. Actually. Oh, okay, <laughs> you're really getting away from the Masters, man. All right, how about, uh, the 14th. That that sounds good, Judge. Uh, yes. That's a Friday, so April 14th. You want like two o'clock? It'll be Zoom. That sounds fine. Okay. So Thank we'll you, Judge. continue it, and Monday is. Let me see what Monday is. So, Miss Palmer, do you have? Um, forgive me. Cash App, Zelle, uh, some sort of something. I have Cash App. Um. So he should be able to. <clears throat> so I want it due on the first of each and every month, but Monday's the sixth. So the first, the first album is going to be on the sixth, and then it'd be. Um, so that would be. February and then March 1st and then April 1st. The thousand dollars? He's pissed. Um, to, Thank you, Because I'm, I'm not representing him on the divorce, Judge. I'm I'm not sure what his income looks like. Oh, no, so. no, that's not. This isn't in the divorce. This is in the TPO, what he's going to pay. I, no, no, I'm just saying I, I, I'm not sure what his uh, financial means are. Yeah, well, since I don't either, you know, by statute, he can pay for the housing where the children live. So I took, I'm leaving her responsible for 552 and him a thousand because she's staying at home. Because right now, to me, if she tries to get a job and pay for daycare, it's going to be more expensive than staying, you know, I mean, that's a problem. Yes, for, for everybody, not, ju not just her. And then if right. you know, both parents work, then daycare eats up one person's entire paycheck. So, right. I think he can he can put he can give her a thousand on Monday, a thousand on March first, and a thousand on April first, and then by then they will be here and or would have went to Judge Williams and Judge Williams would make some sort of you know change. Right. It, any. Right. Just for my client's benefit, I'm just going to state on the record that uh, any yep. any child support and spouse or and or spousal support order in the divorce case will supersede this, and that will be what you are responsible for. Right. So if they get in front of Judge Williams or work something out there, she can she can modify that and that and it will modify it here. But at least there's something in place until they get back. But by then they've had time to go to mediation and hopefully get back in front of Judge Williams. Yes, Judge. And then they would have some real numbers from both because they're supposed to both do their girlfriends and, and, and all of that. Right. So and you had her cash app, so you consider that cash app on Monday. Now, if you, um, you may not know me, Mr. Gresham, but you know, when I say do something, I mean it. These are children. It's not a car payment. It's not for it's children. There's no reason that she should be going out and trying to get assistance when you can help with your children. That thousand dollars is due on the sixth, on the first. Don't put it in the mail. Trust me. You make sure it's delivered and to her on the sixth. But just a mere suggestion, it's your son's birthday. You can figure out some content, and in here they can contact each other about the children. So, of course, if the ch children, if something were happening, heaven forbid, when the children get sick, she could contact you and let you know, Mr. Gresham, because she's not going to do that. So Y'all can have contact about the children only, but it would probably be via email, so don't text one another about anything else, and then if y'all work something out. Um, so, but you're more than... Welcome, Mr. Gresham, to have something delivered to the house. That one boy's birthday. He's two. Congratulations. Thank you both. And Mr. Morris, if you want to put your email in the chat, we'll email you a copy of that reset notice, and it'll happen there when he's supposed to pay that. Okay, Judge, I think I did previously, but I can do it again. Okay. Ms. Palmer, if you'll place your email in the chat, you can leave. So Mr. Gresham will send it to Mr. Morris, and he'll get it to you. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. And happy birthday, little Jeremiah. Oh, who's this poor Thank girl you. crying? Uh -huh. Yes. Judge, Mark goes out for your business. If, uh, I may be excused. Yes, sir. Enjoy your uh, vacation when you leave after doing the master's. <laughs> Thank you. Thank All you. Right. Appreciate Thank you. it. So, my heart goes out to this woman, first of all. Second of all, I tend to believe everything that came out of her mouth because. In these TPO hearings, I've watched hours and hours, and I'm sure if you're watching this video, you have too. When the father is fighting for anything, he is going to grasp at anything that makes him look good. This guy didn't bring up one single thing besides 
her taking off the headphone so she could and throwing up against whatever the attorney had mustered up. Um, and he was trying his best because this guy gave him nothing because he's done nothing, nothing. And judge Manning, that's why she's the best. She zapped him with a thousand bucks. I don't even think the guy's going to come up with a thousand bucks. His mother's going to have to pay. I honestly think the dude has a drug problem and he's partying and he could care less about his kids. Did he even know? <laughs> Did he even know that his son's birthday was today? It, 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 she put it perfectly when she said sickening. It literally is sickening. Miss Bodie, I'll go ahead and remove her so I guess y'all can let her know. Okay. Thank you. All right, so next up, we have um, Vic, Vicky Arnold in the middle. Uh, she's going up against, uh, I think it's her nephew, um, and this one is comic relief. <sighs> Brace yourselves. Yes, Judge. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, uh, Ms. Arnold and Mr. Atkinson. Our heart goes out to Mr. you, Arnold, Ms. Palmer. So God bless. Yes. Y'all both swear a firm testimony you're about to give is Truth, nothing but the truth. Yes, ma'am. Yes. All right. Is that because you also have Mr. Atkinson? Both notes. So, Ms. Atkinson, are you going to be Mr. Atkinson's witness? Mr. Atkinson, you swear firm, yeah? Okay. Are you the witness, yes. Mr. Atkinson? Okay. I'm going to place you in that waiting room, okay? All right. So, kind of like you just did, Ms. Arnold, you still want to go forward? I forgot to ask that. Ms. Arnold, are you still wanting to go forward? Yes. Okay. So start from the most recent event, work backwards, and tell me why you're seeking this CPO. Now, you got to be specific. On this date, he did this, or on this date, he did, okay? Just what happened okay. with him. No one else, all right? And then I'll let Mr. Atkinson respond. Go ahead, Ms. Arnold. Okay. This was um, December the 11th um, last year, of course. Okay. And I came downstairs in the kitchen and noticed that he had my eggs. I have my own refrigerator. Come back in the sun. I have my own refrigerator that's located in the garage. So he had to go out to the garage and get my eggs out the refrigerator. And I noticed that he had them. And because I have mentioned to him several times before about getting my food stuff without my permission, I said to him, I said, oh my, why do you have my eggs? You I'm gonna pause real quick. Are the prices of eggs really starting to cause TPOs? I really think the price of eggs is causing this reaction that we are having TPOs over eggs. He asked me and he said that, you know, he cooking and I said, you can't just take my stuff like that. I said, I can't afford to feed you and your girlfriend like that. And so I realized he was he was cooking still. And I said, um, so how many eggs do you really need? And I think he said something like seven or eight. I said, I'm not going to be able to give you that. I said, I can give you five. So I gave him five eggs. Okay. And he, he finished cooking the breakfast. And... He took it upstairs to Tiffany, who was in here. Look at the hand on his face. I won't pause, I promise. Just look at his hand over his face. <laughs> he, he, only, he only gave him five eggs. And then I got a text on my phone from my bank saying that Tiffany had zelled me, I guess, $6 for eggs. And prior to that what made me go to respond to that text maybe a couple of months or six weeks a couple of months prior to that she had tried to address me about a financial agreement that omar had with me and i had i didn't she came out of the blue saying something about he was going to pay me and i didn't know what, where she was coming from with her statement and I said, what? And she repeated herself. I said, you know what? I said, stop. I said, you cannot get in between mine and Omar's financial business. So when I received that text, I really didn't even know how she was able to send that to me. So I go up the steps 
upstairs. And I asked my granddaughter, I stopped by her room first and I asked her, how was I, how was she able to send me that text through my bank? And so she told me that she had that, the Tiffany had to have my telephone number to do that. So apparently somebody gave her my telephone number without my permission. And so I turned around and I tapped on Omar's door and I went in, which is commonplace because we always having to go in there and wake them up and he'll come. We, that's common in the house that we will enter each other's rooms with the doors closed, tap on the door and just come on in because we've all complained about us doing that to each other. Okay, so I go in and Tiffany's sitting on the side of his bed and she's got a little breakfast table, I, I'll call it, with the food there eating her breakfast. And I stand in front of her, in front of the table, and I say to her, and I'm huffed. I'm not yelling. I don't yell. That's not the way I communicate. I, I have tinnitus and I have TMJ jaw disorder. I go to therapy once a week. That is not how I communicate, nor can I communicate on a regular like that. <laughs> and so she let me know I was too close. And I backed up and I, I apologized. I said, I'm sorry. And I said to her, I said, I have asked you before to not get in between mine and Omar's financial business. She said, well, I got him now. I said, that's good. I said, but you need to give him the money so that he can give it to me so that he can keep his word. I have Hold text. Let me, get you, let me get you back on the connection. Tell me about the violence between you and me. I'm about to get that's how, that's how the violence came about. All right, so, on 285, I mean, I get it. That's how, that's how I'm trying to lead up to how it came about. All right. And so I sit down next to her, almost skin to skin on the bed, talking to her about you know how it's important that people get permission to get each other's you know stuff and if they do get it replace it with the same thing and i can't afford to feed them and blah 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 and the next thing i know omar grabbed me by my arm above my wrist in between my elbow and my wrist and pulled me across the room about five or six feet call itself taking me toward the um thermostat because they said i entered the room before uh without knocking and I apologize for that. If I did, I didn't remember that. But that's what he did. And he was and he was yelling at me to the top of his lungs. And he was squeezing me by my wrist. And she was she was shocked. Cause she said, she said, Babe, you know, like, what are you doing? And he he was just standing there holding me. I can't remember what all he was saying, because he was shouting. And I had to literally shout at him and call him out his name, a profane name for him to turn me loose. And he turned me loose. And then um, I think, I don't know how I got to the phone with his mom. I think she was on the speaker phone and I put the phone up to my ear talking to her and she was saying something. And I said, you, I said, you don't know what's going on over here. I said, you're not here. And she said, shut up. You know, she yelled because that's how they get along. That's how they converse. And I hung up the phone. I walked out the room. And then I have a witness right here, too, which is part of my TPO. Um, my granddaughter, would you like for her to continue? Uh, this, let me, it says on here, uh, whose house is this? It's his, and I rent. All right. So he changed the lock. Tell me about when he changed the locks on you. Okay. Um, well, the, it had to be done in between the incident with my granddaughter and him after December the 28th and, um, me knowing for sure January the 14th, but I had gotten the information through my sister that he had changed the locks and they told me for me to get in that I, my sister said that for me to get in. Cause he had told me, I got text where he's telling me not to come by unless he's there. He'll let me in and out if I need to get anything. And then she's on the other side saying, if I need to get in, she'll let uh, for me to let them know the night before and she'll meet me at the house. I'm out of the city. I'm 40 miles out of the city listed as homeless. Okay. Meet her and she'll let me in to get whatever I want. And I'm like, that can't happen. And my other sisters, they were trying to 
you know, mediated for, for me to be able to do that, for us to be able to go in and out and do that. So my granddaughter was able to go in one time and four each hanging locks, and I made a list of items for her to get for us. Hold on. So he's on. Ma'am. I'm trying to get you on the. He locked you out of the house. Yes. And so. Hold on. I'm going to try to help you move this along a little bit. All right. He said you said you started re uh, receiving harassing phone calls from December. The yes. Um, he well. would. Right. Um, whenever I tried to talk with him, that was no talking to him. He started sending me texts telling me, you know, what I just said. And he, he was sending my granddaughter text telling her to tell me don't come to the house. He got people coming by. I had had COVID and, you know, I'm a threat to them and all that kind of stuff. And then, um, like I said, I don't know really when he changed the locks, but it had to be between December the 28th and December the 14th. And so I came to the city and filed a police report to that effect. Because I really just didn't believe he had done that. So I tried my key, my old key, and it didn't fit. And so, like I said, I called the police and I made a report that I had been uh, illegally evicted. And he would, you know, in between that, if I tried to talk to him or called him or he called me, he just screaming to the top of his lungs, ranting and raving about stuff that's not relevant to what's going on, telling me I can come back in if I give him $3,000, he need to pay his lawyer. If I give him $2,000, if I give him $800 a month, you know, there's no, there's no conversing. There's well, just many, rent. How many times was he, was he calling you, harassing you? Well, after, after I filed the police report, I'm assuming my brother is the one that told them that I had done that because I came in the house no, where on. I am. Who is, who is, I came in the house where I am with my brother on, and my on. sister. Mr. Arnold, Mr. Arnold, who is Mr. and Ms. Atkinson to you? Who are they? Miss Atkinson is my sister and Omar is her son and my nephew. There's my nephew. All right. Hold on a second. Let me hear from, okay. Stop for a second. Mr. Atkinson, let me hear from you. I don't know. I judge. I so hold on, Mr. X. So you're her can nephew. I say, can I say this, Judge? Hey, are you her nephew? Yes. Okay, that's okay. Now go ahead. I just want to get the relationship right. And everybody's gonna everybody's gonna be mad at me right now. I have an engineering degree, but communication is not my strong suit. I cannot tell you what. First of all, I don't know how to tell you, Judge. I wish you could experience what I've experienced. She said eggs. She has her own refrigerator with eggs. The day she moved in in 2019, she moved my furniture. She drove my car. With, I didn't even know she had a key. <laughs> um, the, the, the incident where I grabbed her hand, I have not had a violent act against anyone. She was she was living at my girlfriend for trying to help me um not have her be upset about me eggs. I don't know how to express myself. If she, and she went when when I grabbed her hand and I did want her to see the thermostat because the reason why I wanted to see the thermostat because that was the second time that day my girlfriend was visiting me in the bedroom. That was the second time that day that she had bars in our room. She bars in, she could have been naked and she just started changing the, the thermostat. And that's what she does. She does whatever she wants. That's not true. Whatever she wants and it doesn't what I say. The, I, I, this, Christmas was the first time that I had the courage to tell her I didn't want her to continue to be living in my house. I didn't. I didn't initiate that. And let me say this: when when I, when she grabbed when I grabbed her arm between the wrist, her wrist and her um forearm, she yanked it away and she pointed at me like she pointed at my my wow. and, and listen, this is what she said. This is a, God is my witness. She said, "Boy, I will have you locked." Up. And then she sat next to Tiffany and said, look at how crazy he is. 
I can't, I can't, I, I wish you could spend some time with me. And no, it's Arnold. Oh. Oh. It's Arnold. He did not interrupt yeah. you. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know y'all can hear me. I'm sorry. Can't do it. I do know that I am an emotional person. I, I my, my girlfriend used to ask me, why you don't say that to your aunt? I said, I'm not in Vicky's pay grade. If you know the type of stuff she has done to people, I don't do that. I don't take people to court. My mom told me to get an eviction for her. I said, I, I said, how? Is an eviction. She drove my car, and then that that her witness when my car got repossessed, she had her granddaughter meet me at the door and say, "What happened to your car, bro?" And then she also had that same fifteen year old girl send when I got a text from my HOA, got a letter from my HOA. She said, and she she she, she didn't even open the eight because it was a certified letter from HOA. She had Marika send my mom a text saying, your son ain't paying the mortgage. And then my mom used to have to give me groceries. And she already on six dollars worth of eggs. And, and, and they they like I said, they had a refrigerator full of food. I had to travel to Charlesburg on a regular basis just to have groceries in my refrigerator and they living in my house and I can't get no food stamps. And she and then the first time Tiffany came over, that's my girlfriend. She told me, oh my, you can't have company. I said, Vicky, I'm having company this weekend. And then she proceeded to say, oh my, you can't have company. And then she went and told Marika, Marika, oh my, I don't give a damn about you. And, and everybody know that's my favorite cousin. I, if anything, I protect Marika. I don't, I don't cause her danger. Mar Marika know every time she goes out and I take her somewhere, she don't leave my eyesight. When she go to games, when she go out with her friends, I make sure she's somewhere in my eyesight. Even the night, the night when she came up there, Vicky sent her up to my house after I told Vicky she can come back, and she sent her up there on an Uber at nine o'clock at night. The girl had on biker shorts by herself in an Uber. What grandma, I ain't gonna say that. When she came, I said, Marika, what are you, how'd you get here? I said, Marika, you gotta go back to your grandma. And then when she, when, when she, Marika left, I followed Marika. And Marika didn't even put the dog, she walked up the street. I followed her up the street. I said, Marika, I need to see your Uber route. Cause I'm not gonna leave you out here in the dog. I need to see, I, and I stood with Marika and waited for her get in that Uber. I had to make her even call the Uber so she could go back with her grandma. I know I, I, I don't have a violent bone in my body. I get emotional because I don't know how to communicate. Yes, I have an engineering degree, right. but I don't know how to communicate. Okay. So I'm sorry, Judge, if you give her whatever, I, if you know me, you know I don't try. I exactly. Exactly. It, 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 Family stuff's worse than anything else. Miss Arnold, he, he said he put, but you don't live there anymore. Y'all are related. There's, it doesn't look like they live. lives at Five Westgate Parkway. So, you know, there's no other reason. Y'all are family, you know, and I mean, yeah, Mr. Ragson, I tell you, don't let her live there anymore because that's just not really how you put people out of the house. Okay? May I say something good? What's that? I have texts where I Omar and I correspond and I can dispute almost up to 95% of what he said is not true. Okay. The but, way that the way that we communicate. Well, I, but Ms. Arnold, the, see, I, I can't solve family problems. I know uh, that, but I'm just saying what he's saying that happened and the way that it happened, I have to text to show that that's not true. That's not the way that it happened. Right. Now I didn't get a chance to say or finish about the and, harassing part. And and had enough. Well, but Ms. Arnold, I heard you. He kept telling you he needs all that. And that's what's all about rent. Okay, right. may, may I tell you what where I'm left now? I still have not been able to get in the house and get my okay. belongings. Next up, Mr. Atkinson, when can she come get her belongings? You're on mute, Mr. Atkinson. When can she have somebody come get her belongings? Mute. Is Miss Renee? Is that your sister? Oh, send her a text, Judge. Judge, is Renee I, your sister? I, I, His text tell me that I can no, come and get my belongings when he's there. Who dead. is Renee Atkinson? That's my, my sister, mom. his mom. Okay, hold on then. Let me, all right. 
Mr. Atkinson only. Oh. Ms. Renee Atkinson, can you take yourself off mute? Thank you, the mute button. <laughs> okay, yeah, good morning. Okay, Ms. Renee, all I want to know from you is somehow, can you be in your little son and your sister and make it so she can get her belongings? Yes, uh, okay. Your Honor. That's all I need. That's all I need you to do. I have the, Your Honor. Yes, ma'am. Could I say one little thing? I'm, I'm maybe two things. This is a terrible thing to me. But most of my, I'm serious. I talked to my sister. I want to say something because my sister made a lot of statements. The first statement I want to address is the fact when she sent her granddaughter up that night in an Uber by herself. I talked to the granddaughter. I talked to Marika and Omar as they was waiting there for the Uber. And the fact that she said, when Omar said he took Marika everywhere, he did do that. I sold my home. Omar took care of Marika from April to June by himself. I would check on her every day because she did virtual school and went to a private school because of COVID. And I checked on her because Omar would leave every day going to work. He'd come home from work to make sure he had a meal. And when COVID lacked stuff enough, he took her to the park to be with her friends. He took her to the games. He even started taking her to the football games and basketball games with himself, paying for her ticket. All right, I got it. All right, I got it. So, All right. Hey, I do have the key. I let my sister know sure. that I had the key. And anytime that she wanted to go to that house and get things, no matter how long it took, I'm retired and she doesn't work. I would meet her there and she could take care of whatever she needed to do. All right, thank you. Ms. Arnold, reach out to your sister. Y'all work it out so you can go get your thing. All of y'all can go ahead and leave the meeting. I'm not putting this in place, okay? Oh. Thank y'all. Y'all stay healthy and safe. Be nice to everybody. Uh, just work it out so the two sisters don't stay on the thank you so much. obey. <laughs> All right, um, let's see. And then what happened was I was about to sh shut the recording off because I was like, I can't be three for three with three great, great TPOs back to back to back. Um, and <clears throat> the um, the last one that I got, um, it, the feed cut off, uh, Manning cut it off, but we got enough in the beginning for a little comic relief just to get uh, a glimpse of what happened. Uh, but it, it, it it's it's good to also. Johnson, Miss Edwards. Miss Johnson and Miss Edwards. <laughs> Right? This is a train wreck. Okay. <laughs> Ms. Johnson and Ms. Edwards. Ms. Johnson and Ms. Edwards. Let me let these other people into a little bit more. <laughs> All right, everybody. Turn your cameras on. Stay on mute. Serenity now! Serenity now! Turn this up. I'm going to get y'all in just a second. Everybody, okay. else, turn your cameras on. Stay on mute. Everybody, turn your cameras on. Stay on mute. Everybody, turn your cameras on. Stay on mute. Everyone, turn your cameras on, please, and stay on mute. Unless She's the dad, best. Your camera should be on. Unless your office staff, your camera should be on. I'm running on to radio. Unless your office staff, your camera should be on. Donnie Edwards will take your case next, and Miss uh, Miss Beaker will take y'all's case next. All right, for the folks who are here for the eleven o'clock counter call, when I call your name, take yourself off mute and stay here. That means you reach down and hit that little microphone and take yourself off mute. Okay, and stay here. Amber Petty, Amber Petty, Jarrell King. Stay to a Um. 
Ms. Freak, could you just send her a message that hers is reset until February the 17th? And yes, Your Honor. I, I, I can't. Could you send him proof that he was served? Yes, ma'am. My son just got murdered. I'm not even on this type of time. I got a whole list of things that she's done to me and pulled guns on me. She's my, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the one that should be afraid oh to be God. here right now. And she's a property man. All right. All right. I can hear you. All right. But I don't see you. Let's see what's going on here. No, um, I don't need to see me, but we'll try this, ma'am. But if you can't do this on the bus, I don't know what we're going to do. see you. Okay. I see like three other people and her. Ms. Edwards. I, I see four Ms. Edwards. people. Ms. Edwards. Ms. Edwards. I can't help you see me. Oh, I see you now. There you I are. I need to know. Now I lost you again. Get on the bus. Ms. Edwards. I cannot help you. You need to. I don't know if you're going to be able to go forward riding on the bus. Ms. Edwards. I see you right there. But then when I click on it, I see other faces. I can't do this today. Marie, I'm sorry, I can't. <laughs> today, I can't. Cedra, I'm sorry, I can't. I can't. I know. My son just got murdered. I'm not even on this type of time. I got a whole list of things that she's done to me and pulled guns on me. She's my, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the one that should be afraid oh to be God. here right now. And she's a property manager. Liar. Ms. Edwards, you yes. get somewhere besides on a bus to do this hearing. I can't do this with you riding on the bus. Okay, I'm with my client, um, and this is her trip to the doctor. So that's why I'm on a bus. I actually do have a car. Uh, we are on our way back to her home. Um, but that's going to be another maybe 10 minutes. Um, this Deidre has said that, that her son, and I'm so sorry, Ms. Deidre, Very her sad. son has been murdered. And are you wanting to go forward, Ms. Edwards? Uh, is there any way we can do a, this is for the permit uh, protection, right? Is there any way we can do a uh, later today or later another date? Because I am us and I'm, I can't I'm really put Ms. Edwards. everything. And judge, when when I first signed in at 9.30, the owner of the property called and texted me and told me she was there on the property, which the temporary protection order states that she's not supposed to be no, the, the police was here. The police was there. Without a sheriff escort. Is that no, the she, police was here. Now, Amber, can you give another day? Order, she has it three or four times since I've had since she granted me the order. She's been back over there. Ms. Edwards. Uh, Ms. Edwards. Ms. Edwards. Yes. Ms. Edwards. Okay, be, be. Listen, is it the seventeenth, uh, Amber? Yes, Your Honor, the seventeenth at nine thirty. All right. All right, Ms. Edwards. Yes. Yeah. We're resetting this to the seventeenth at nine thirty. Ms. Deidre said okay. her son was just murdered. She's got stuff she has to deal with, but ma'am, you can't do this hearing riding on the bus. I mean, you can't. Okay, 17th, uh, February is fine at 9.30. Well, it's not fine for me because I got to go to Kansas City and bury my son. Oh. Your Honor, that took place three weeks ago. Well, Ms. Um, Edwards, right I'm not, I mean, no. Ms. Edwards. I mean, I understand y'all's situation may be serious, and I'm not one to tell Miss Johnson that it's three weeks and she needs to, you know, strengthen up and move on. It was her son, Miss Edwards. No, oh. I'm saying she buried her son three weeks ago. She no, I wine. did not. No, I did not. That happened, that uh, happened when she was still at the property. Miss Edwards, Miss Edwards, Miss Edwards, Miss Edwards. Seventeen. Okay, I can't really not anything. Not people listening. It's but seventeen. 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 Ms. Deidre, can you write in the chat your email? Yes. 
Okay, if you place your email in the chat, Miss Deidre, you can go ahead and leave. And I'm so sorry for your loss. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Not for nothing. Three weeks ago, a month ago, who cares? The fact that you even bring it up that it was three weeks ago, what a pair do you have? And not for nothing, this TPO was so important. I know people have to go to work, but you could put out a take carve out a slot of time and you tell your boss, you say, listen, I have this whatever after me and I want to get a protective order. I need a couple hours until I get called on Zoom. So I may not have to get on public transportation so I could talk to the judge. So I really don't think Miss Edwards is going to be in the judge's favor on the 17th. And I am going to make sure on the 17th. I'm actually marking it on my calendar at work and at home to make sure I get that TPO day to make sure we get to hear what's going on with Miss Edwards because it is disgusting what she just said. And I my heart goes out to this woman, Deirdre. And I was I apologize. I was laughing at her before in the beginning of the video. Um about the uh, about her could not log and be able to log on and mute in an email. She's got a lot going on. It, it's disgusting that what this woman uh, had had the, the audacity to say. It's some some people just absolutely sick in me. Thank you, Miss Marie. Okay, uh, let's see. Manning's disgusted. All right, so we got Miss Baker and we have uh, let's see, Mister Baker. We got this is the one that gets cut off. <laughs> All right. Um, but we just get enough. Uh, just listen, just listen what she was claiming that happened. Yeah, let's see. All right, can y'all raise your right hand? Y'all swear firm testimony about to give is the truth, all truth, nothing but the truth. Yes. I do. Okay. I do. So, Miss Maria Baker, can you tell me who Mr. Baker is to you? Husband. Okay. All right. Are, are you in the middle of a divorce? Have you filed a divorce or? Um, I'm trying to seek a legal separation. Okay. All right. Just want to kind of get my foot in there. All right. And who is Monique Baker to you? That's, That's daughter. his daughter. Okay. All right. So, but not your daughter together. It's his. Excuse and me, ma'am. It's, it's not your daughter with him, correct? No, ma'am. Okay. Yes. No, ma'am. All right. So, Ms. Baker, tell me. Why you want a TPO against Mr. Baker? Start with the most recent event, and you can just be direct, just specific. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. You said a recent event, right? Yes, ma'am, and you work back. Okay. Um, four, four months ago, ma'am, um, this one it all started. He has not sleep slept here because if he wants to bring his daughter here. She's she's schizophrenic, and she's not on any medication. She's not being treated. She fights him. She attacked me five years ago. And I went to jail because I was protecting myself. She was doing things to my dog and he wants to bring her back in here for me to live with that. And so he been gone four months, four, four, five months now. He had not slept here because he been with her, which is fine with me. But then he came back. I had to keep calling the police because he wants to start tearing up the house, breaking the doors. He choked me and told me he should have killed me. When did he choke you and tell you that? What date that was? Let me see. I'm going to get the date, ma'am. Wait a minute. I mean, the last 30 days, 60 days, last... Um, it was the last 60, 60 days, 30 days, I believe. Okay. And uh, and I have a recorded man where he said he should have killed me because I was telling him, you don't put your hand on women, and he said I should have killed you. Oof. Okay. You want to play that? Yes, ma'am. Okay, just do me a favor. Don't talk while you're playing it, okay? So I can yes, ma'am. Can you to come help me put this on the on the thing? I can't find it. Come help me. Uh, uh. Oh, I got it. Okay. <laughs> what was that? Play it again because she can't move. Yeah, 
Did you hear it, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. All right, Mr. Baker, let me hear from you. What do you have to say? Uh, Your Honor, my wife is a, a compulsive liar. I never, I never hit my wife in the last, in, in 25 to 26 years we lived together. Uh -huh. I never touched that woman. Uh, me and this lady, I was, I was, I, 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 I had been living in, I had been living in the house less than three months ago. So she's lying there. And, uh, and, uh, me and her had an incident. I came, I came in one, cause I, every, every day, every night I would sleep in the car with my daughter cause she went, she went down to Peachtree City to the, to the judge down in there. And, uh, we, cause, uh, Maria came into the house one day, one morning, and uh, my daughter, my daughter had came, came in the bathroom while I was fixing to brush my teeth that morning. And uh, she had the pillow and the blanket going to sleep in the tub. Yeah, he so talked five years ago. He's not talking I, about recent. He's not I, talking I, about I, recent. I asked her, I asked her, what she what, what was she doing? What was she want to sleep in the tub? I said, go to your room and sleep in your room. She said no. So at that time, Marie, Maria Baker came in from off on break on driving the school bus, broke into the bathroom, and just started with my dog. You Mr. wanna Baker. fight me? I'll Mr. fight Baker. you now. Come on and fight me. You wanna fight me? I'm begging her to, to, to let me handle the thing. She said, Yeah, she didn't tell you that uh she okay. cursed me out yesterday. I said, No, she didn't tell me. I said, so I tried to ask my daughter. Mr. Mr. Baker. <laughs> Mr. Baker. Mr. Baker. Mr. Baker. When, tell me when yeah. that happened. When did that happen? Huh? When yeah, did that I happen? A, I don't know exactly. Manning what mom. Day, though. What, what mom. Uh, frozen. Funny was, did it happen? 2018. That years ago, Mr. Baker? I don't know exactly how long. I, I, I couldn't remember, but but she, it, she, that she, was when I went to jail. Hold on, hold on, Ms. Baker. Hold on, Mr. Baker. Why are you saying that you yes, should kill? Why are you saying you should huh? kill? Why are you saying What's you should? That? Why did you say you should kill? Him? No, I didn't. I didn't tell her that I, I should kill him. But I, in fact, I, I, I did say something to that effect. She was, she was talking to the lady. A little lady that's in there now, Kenyatta, and I, 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 I was being sarcastic with her when she, when she made that statement. And that little lady in, 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 in there with her, Baker, Kenyatta, Mr. Miss Mr. Sibley, Baker. Mr. Baker, we raised that girl. Mr. Baker, we raised that Mr. girl. Mr. Baker, Mr. Baker. Yeah. So you told her you would kill her to be sarcastic. <laughs> yeah, I was just clowning with her because she was she had told she had Mr. Mr. Baker. Mr. Baker. <laughs> Listen, especially today, we don't clown around and tell people we're gonna kill them. Yeah, I know that. Yeah. All right. But I mean I, 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 I I've been really Mr. Baker, Mr. Baker, Mr. Baker, Mr. Baker, Mr. Baker, Mr. Baker. Mr. Baker. Y'all gotta stop this. I'm gonna put this one in place. Y'all get a divorce if the judge is doing that can or separation, the judge is doing that can take care of it. Ms. Baker, let me ask you a couple questions. The one against Ms. Monique Baker. Is everything in your TP uh, petition still correct about Ms. Monique Baker? Well, can you can I you that? Hold on, Mr. Baker. Ms. Baker, is everything yes, in your petition okay? Are you still in fear for your safety from Ms. Monique Baker? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You want that in place? Against Ms. Well, Monique Baker. Judge, Judge, can I, can Mr. I Baker, make Hold on a second, Mr. Baker. Please let me finish talking to Ms. Baker. Mm -hmm. All right. Ms. Baker, and you want that in place yeah. against Ms. Monique Baker? What's that? Maria, <laughs> yes, do you want that in place against Monique? Yes, ma'am. Okay, stand by. Mr. Baker, what else do you want to tell me? Well, well, when, when, when the, the incident she talking about with, Mon, with, Mon, with Monique. Sir, Monique Mr. Baker, Mr. Baker you, you don't get, Monique didn't show up. I've handled that case. Is there anything else you want to tell me about you? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, I want to say what uh, I, I, I never I never hit Marie in twenty some odd okay. years. Uh, okay. We we we've been together. 
Okay. And I've been, I've been really good. You choked me. You choked me. Mr. Baker, when the two of you, if y'all go get your separation, the judge that handles that, they can work it out. All right? Okay, that'd be, that's fine with me. Okay. Ms. Baker, so, you put your email in the, I think we've got your honey spice. That it, Ms. Baker? Your email you yes, ma'am. So, ma'am. So, ma'am. I'm placing them both in, I'm putting them both in order, in place. We're going to email you copies of the order, okay? Okay, can safe. I? Yes. <laughs> ma'am, yeah. the, uh -huh. the order that you gave me, they're not honoring the order. My husband pretending that, you know, he's so sick and he old and this and that. Every, he's still coming around the house. He been cut, uh, he came around here yesterday twice Mr. since you Baker, gave me the order. Mr. Baker, this TPO is in place. It's been in place. If she calls the police, you're going to get arrested for aggravated stalking. That carries a sentence of up to 10 years. Stay away. Call the police, Ms. Baker. That's your, that's your, that's your, what you thank, need. Thank you. Uh -huh. All right. Thank you. Uh, Tanya Graham, elect Alexander Howard. I believe. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Well, there we have it. Another entertaining day in Zoom court. Judge Manning just could not catch a break. And I tell, didn't I tell you there was herpes? Please like and subscribe to the channel. Set your notifications so you never miss a show. And before I go, I just wanted to promote crazy Sealy Council meeting series that I'm going to be posting to the channel. Video one is already up. And if you like real life drama with murder, sex, and scandals, then please check that video out. I'm your boy, Phil, and you got served, nerds.